as he said, my name's Jared Fender, been here eight years, kind of been from the start, a lot of transitional phases, but here's our next newest thing, and that's that we're diving into Tripsville now. So this year we launched a first year trial, and we're trying to figure out how to optimize nutrient use efficiency and yield using Tripsville. So a little blast from the past year, uh, 2020, this was where this picture was taken out here on one of our research fields. This is a four row Dawn toolbar with a Coulter setup. This is what a lot of our research was using uh, 2012 era, or 2012 to around 2022. So eight years, eight, nine years of data came from this toolbar. However, over that course of time, it became worn out. We needed replacements. Dawn actually stopped supporting these row units. So we were kind of stuck in a rock in a hard place. But then in October 31 of 22, uh, Strip Pill, Magazine, Farm Equipment, all the news releases released that John Deere was partnering with Soil Warrior to help push out Soil Warrior Strip Pill bars. So in uh, February 2023, you were actually able to order these and get them shipped out. And then actually in March of 23, that's when ours showed up. Greg Nielsen's back there at the table with Soil Warrior. He's a very large help to us on this project. And uh, four rows. Uh, a little smaller than your normal production one, but since we deal with plots, we renamed it from a soil warrior to a plot warrior. So, got it here in March, March 29th, we brought it right into the shop, started working on it, put our Montag specialized uh, fertilizer delivery system on the toolbar, made, tried to make everything work on it, however, that's where this project kind of stopped, because actually two days later we were putting soybeans in the field. So planning kind of took over, put this to the back burner, kind of had to push it off to the back. So picked it back up after the summer, November 2023, brought it back in here, got everything all finished up, and we finally had an idea on how we were going to use this tool bar. So, we took it out in the field, we actually have one trial out there this year. Uh, we're looking at broadcast versus strip till versus conventional till. So actually right here, you can see on the left hand side, we stripped a few passes through our field and our Gandhi out there with Dalton Kinnear on the back is actually not having fun because it's 30 degrees. It's a lot polar opposite versus today. 30 degrees out there and he's trying to broadcast P&K out there on this field. And how that looks is just like this, this blue blue dots on this screen in relation to the corn roots is conventional broadcast fertilizer placed on the surface. So it kind of works in through rain, everything else depending on your timing, fall versus spring. And then our second treatment was actually a coulter application, which is how the soil water is currently set up out there. So the coulter, depending on your tillage width, on your blade setup, and then also your tillage depth is kind of how it affects where the fertilizer is placed. So you could have it four inches wide, six inches wide, eight inches down, two inches down, however you want to have it set up. So I actually referenced a six by six inch box out here. That's how we had it set up. And we're actually blowing the fertilizer in with the soil as it's disturbed by the front coulters into that six inch by six inch box. And then again, here's how it's represented by a corn root, six inches wide, six inches down, kind of spread out throughout that root zone. And then next, we actually have a knife application of it. So the Soil Warrior does offer a shank treatment. We call this a stratified application. And this was actually designed to kind of replicate our past design with the Dawn Toolbar. Because the Dawn Toolbar had a disc opener that made a slot, and then we blew it down into that slot. So this was kind of a copy as close as we could get it to our past research to try and keep that continuing on. So the fertilizer is blown at soil level, and then as the shank disturbs the soil and pushes it outward, the fertilizer falls down in before the dirt can be brought back in to fill that soil trench from that night. And then our last treatment for the strip, sorry. And then there's a representative photo about straight line, kind of with the shank, because the shank opens up the way for the fertilizer to fall down into that trench, and then basically right in line with the root, and then we fall in with RTK and plant right on top of that again. And then our last knife application is a concentrated application. This is on the market uh, through Unverfirst bars. Uh, there's many different manufacturers out there that do that. 
this place is 100% of your fertilizer at your tillage depth. So whether you're running it at 10 inches down, 8 inches down, uh, your fertilizer is going to be placed at that depth. So a little bit different than that stratified shank. This one's going to put your fertility all the way at the bottom, how you have your uh, shank set up. And then here's a representative photo of how that is uh, in the field with the corn root. And then my next slide is all four of them put together so you can see the variations between them. We're trying to figure out this year uh, timing wise on this. So whether fall versus spring or uh, shank versus coulter, anything, whatever works for East Central Illinois, we're going to try and figure it out this year and that's why we are working with these four setups here. So here's my treatments for this year. We have no-till, true 100% no-till, conventional till where we ripped it in the fall and then came back in with a soil finisher in the spring and worked those plots. Then we have the three strip tills. We have uh, P and K or with and without P and K. And then we have the fall versus spring timing. And then as you can see on the left, the five treatments on tillage, no-till broadcast, conventional till broadcast, and then our three uh, strip tillage treatments. And then our fertility was 75 pounds an acre from MESZ, from Mosaic, and then 60 pounds of K2O from Moth. And then this was applied with 175 pounds of N as a weed and feed in the spring, UAN sprayed over the top after it was worked because strip till, we couldn't incorporate it. And then again, the fall versus spring timing. So here's an overview picture of it in the fall, November 10th. There's half of the treatment. This is 12 acres. There's 100 and 116 strips out here. There's half of them in the fall. November 10th is when we put out everything all in 24 hours. And then here it is in the spring when we came back and did the spring treatments. And then the blue arrow, you can see the fall treatments right there next to the uh, toolbar where we're just finished up the last pass of the spring treatment. So May 13th, we came back in. May 21st, we came back in, planted it with a precision planter, no walk alleys, uh, production level planter, planted it with channel 21570. I've gotten a lot of questions about why 21570 from channel. Well, because of Sam's root rating over here on this hybrid, it's a large, wide, large root. So it has a lot of surface area, a wide angle, and it grows deep. We kind of picked that because it seems centered to where it's not going to favor one treatment or another. It's going to be a nice general root size for all three of the treatments based upon fertilizer placement. Came in and planted it. This was, uh, I believe, June, June 9th. We were a little bit past emergence. And then we finally got our full sample values back. This field roughly 4% organic matter, pretty normal for Champagne, uh, East Central Illinois dirt here. CEC 18.5, 18.2. Our P is 42 parts per million, and then our K is 220. Looking at those numbers, you would think, well, we don't really need P and K out here. And that's what A&L even says. They say for CEC, P and K, that we're on the higher end of the spectrum that you really shouldn't be doing P and K on this field. But, my parents can confirm this, I don't see the best. But when I look at that picture, I can see a clear, distinct difference between the row on the right versus the row on the left. And actually, both of these rows were stripped at the same time, same day, and have that much of a difference. What is the difference? The rows on the right have P and K, and the rows on the left have no fertility in the spring. Even though that A&L says that we're high on P and K, we still see a solid growth difference in the spring from fertilization on there. July 25th, we came back out, we hit a uh, tassel, we started taking soil samples to try and track nutrient movement. So on the left, you actually see there's a probe in row because most of my fertilizer treatments are uh, concentrated right in the row. So we're taking soil samples in the row, and then we're pulling out that core at 12 inches and dividing it up between three segments, 0 to 4, 4 to 8, 8 to 12. And why did we pick three segments? Is because of fertilizer placement. We have one that's kind of running 8 to 10 inches down. We have the culture that's kind of set up at 6, 6 inches deep. And then we have the no-till that's on the surface kind of working its way down. So we could have done 0 to 3 and split it up four ways, but that would kind of 
gotten our uh, tillage treatments in the middle of the zone, so working with four inch splits, we get uh, some of our tillage treatments in a nice split and be able to. We actually got these soil samples yesterday at 11 a.m. Would have loved to have that, but didn't have enough time to throw it into this presentation. So lastly, I know I don't have a whole lot of data on here. I'm a visual learner. I like to learn from pictures. But come back next year, and I will continue on this talk and hopefully answer some of these questions like, uh, how does tillage timing affect your strip till performance? Whether does spring work best in East Central Illinois? Does fall, fall culture work the best? We don't really know right now on this dirt. We're going to try it. We're going to come back next year and hopefully answer that. And then also, because of the soil samples that we're taking, we're going to try and answer the fertility by placement interaction in these soils that are out here that we're working on, and then also the nutrient movement. I don't have a lot of data about that. However, Gabby, I'm going to set her up. She is actually going to track the movement and show you guys how some of the P and K moves throughout the soil. And then we're also looking at hybrid interactions with strip fill, uh, kind of roping Sam and myself in together, taking his root pictures, taking our strip fill data, combining them and working as a team. And then eventually we're going to try and do suggestions for that through his root rating based upon your uh, application technique. So with that, I will take any questions if anybody has.